What up Kayla's crew and welcome to Kayla's Heat and Greet. So today I'm coming to you from the forest. <laughs> uh, I figured I'd start the vlog out with just kind of taking a quick walk around um, this like forested area near my house because the trees are turning and it's finally look like, looking like fall. So um, I don't really know a good trail to take. So I'm just kind of exploring, but I'm gonna take you with me. Let's do this. Okay, so uh, this path leads to a bridge, well, a couple bridges, and I'm very scared to walk over those. Does it look solid? I don't know. Here goes. Oh God. Oh God, help me. Ah! One bridge down, there's one more to go. This is kind of cool though. I'm like legit in the woods and this path is just windy and it's really hilly. I thought I was gonna fall a couple times. Let me show you around. So I guess I'm going the wrong way, but like, what? There's one way walking paths? Who knew? There's a little stone path to a higher up walking path maybe, bike path, um, but it looks like there's also another path, so I'm gonna take that route. <sighs> I'm on higher ground now, I can fucking climb that whole thing. Um, and you know what, I'm pretty like positive that these are all bike paths because I see a lot of bike tracks around it, but then also, and maybe that's why it said wrong way, but also look. Do you see that right there? It kinda looks like a bike jump-ish almost. It was just a pile of mud, but I don't know. Finally going the right way. So I've been out here about half hour, 45 minutes. I'm gonna head back now. Hopefully I can get back. I, I know how I got here, but I don't wanna go downhill like so steep those couple times. So I'm hoping there's a way back to the main road from this level. <laughs> we'll see. If I get lost in the woods and you guys don't see this video, you won't know to contact authorities. So never mind. <laughs> if you see this posted, it means I made it back safe. I made it back safe, guys. So I wanted to try something. Um, this will probably be like the product review of the week. I got this Simple Mills Almond Flour Baking Mix Artisan Bread. So here it is. And it looks like it has almond flour, arrowroot, flax meal, tapioca starch, sea salt, and baking soda. So I wanted to try, you can make a loaf of bread with this, but I don't really have much need for like a whole loaf of bread. I already have some bread that's frozen. I was thinking about making some dinner rolls and they do have a recipe on how to make the dinner rolls on the back. It calls for two eggs, a half cup of water, two tablespoons of oil, and three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. So um, I'm just gonna make half a, half a batch because that makes 12 dinner rolls and so it says you should put them in a like dish like that. What do you call this? Muffin tin, muffin tray. Um, because I'm guessing the the batter is like kind of wet. It's not like a dough, like a bread dough, you know. But I wanted to try this together and see if it actually tastes good and makes some good dinner rolls. So let's do it. All right. First thing I'm gonna do is heat the oven, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Oop. All right, that's going. 
and then basically you just whisk the eggs, water, and oil together in a large bowl. All right, I got it all in here. <laughs> See, I'm not like moving my camera today, apparently. So yeah, just, I did a fourth a cup of water, one egg, and one tablespoon of olive oil. All right, uh, that's mixed together, and now you add the baking mix. Oh, so this is gonna be tough because it just says add all of it, and I'm gonna have to measure out what half of it is. Oops. Okay, so I'm smart. <laughs> I just weighed the whole thing, and it was 10.5 ounces, so half of that is 15 point, or sorry, 5.25. So I just put the rest of it in a Ziploc. Go back in the box. Yay, okay, so. Here is the almond flour baking mix. Just throw it all in, I guess. <sighs> all right. Don't know how wet this is gonna be. Probably pretty wet. Maybe like a pancakey batter or like a muffin batter. Let's see. Actually thicker than I thought. Pretty thick. All right, so yeah, Um. basically, oh yeah, we need to add the vinegar. Oh yeah, I'm doing it right. Add vinegar and stir until incorporated. So we're just gonna do one and a half tablespoons. Ooh. Just smelled it, that is strong. All right, one. I've never heard, heard of a bread recipe calling for vinegar. I don't know what it would be for. Maybe it's for flavor, or maybe it has something to do with how the almond flour is. It might not work without it, I don't know. So this is thinning it out a tiny bit. We go so now I put it into little cups little muffin spots I don't know what you call anything I don't know words I gotta grease these first I don't have any oil spray so I'm probably just gonna take some oil and use like a paper towel and kind of like smear it on six of these uh, I made a half batch so it's gonna make six muffins all right I've got them oiled up and now we just add this in little by little This is how full they get, it looks like. Not terribly full, they might poof up a bit because of the egg. So I'm gonna throw this in. It says to cook it for 25 minutes. And then it says, if desired, broil a few minutes at the end to brown the tops. So we'll see if we wanna do that. All right, I'm gonna throw this in and I'll be back in 25. Muffins are done, so I just showed them to you, and here's one out of the muffin tin. So yeah, it just literally looks like a muffin. I haven't tried one yet. Let's open it up and see. Oh, it's still a little warm. Very cool. Looks cooked all the way through. Smells pretty good. Mmm. I like the flavor of that. Mmm. Yeah. It's, it's surprisingly moist on the inside. Like, I thought it was going to be super dry. Mmm. -mm. This is awesome. Um. So it says for either one slice of bread or one dinner roll, so that's one twelfth of this whole box of the recipe. For one twelfth, it is 120 calories, 7 grams of fat, uh, 12 grams of carbohydrates, 2 grams of fiber, 3 grams of protein, um, sodium is 200 milligrams, potassium is 95 milligrams. Um, so yeah, not too terribly bad. I'm liking it. So we could put some butter on it. I don't have butter, but it'd also be really good served with like a soup you can like dip it in the soup mm. all right um i'll rate this do like eight out of ten it's it's good i recommend it you could you know what you could do is add some like flax seeds in here or like poppy seeds on top or um some herbs like rosemary or something would be really good in this oh i should have done at least i have half the box left okay i'm looking at my herbs right now 
just mix it into it. Why not? Mm. <laughs> this is really good. Now I'm like gonna have to not eat all six of them. <laughs> oh my god, it's delicious. All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Guys, that was a lot of work. Way more, I, way more than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Bit off a little bit more than I can chew, but great news. I, the sauce actually curdled because I used half and half in the sauce and I stepped away for too, like a little bit too long or something. And while the chicken was still like simmering in it, it curdled and I'm like, crap. So real quick, Googled, how do you save a curdled sauce? And I saved it. I mean, look. It's gorgeous. I'll pour some more on here just so you can see, and I'll probably use that for dipping. Um, but I saved the sauce and I simmered it a lot more because I had to add a couple ice cubes to stop the cooking and just like whisk it crazily forever. My back hurts. So this is my uh, mushroom chicken, I guess, smothered mushroom chicken. And this gravy-ish sauce has no flour in it. Um, I did use chicken thighs. Let's try one of these bad boys. Here it is up close. It is pretty bright. Mm. Honestly, I could probably pick, this is really small, this one. Probably pick it up. Let me show you guys up close, like, a little bit. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. <laughs> okay, ooh, whatever. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Worth every terrible minute of it. <laughs> mm. It is so flavorful. I have not, I don't think I've ever successfully done like a reduced pan sauce. That's basically what this is. Like I reduced the chicken stock a lot, and then I put the cream in, reduced it a lot. 
well, I simmered it with these while it reduced. And then I curdled and I had to like add the ice cubes and <laughs> simmer it again and like reduce it again. So this sauce has a lot of flavor in it. Ooh, yeah, let's, let's do one of these. Oh yeah, glisteny. Mm. Gristle. Mm. This is amazing. I'll put the calories and macros down here too for you guys, if in case you're curious with how I did the recipe. Mm. Messy eating it that way, but I like it. Mm. So a little bit more about the recipe since I don't really put this like a description in the rest, you know, in the description box. I don't put the recipe down there and I don't really tell you guys what I'm using specifically, but mm. I did use pasture raised chicken thighs from Thrive Market. Um, I've been ordering their meat, like their frozen meat from there, and it actually is pretty good. And it is a little pricey, but for organic food, it's not bad price, especially the chicken. Um, I use shiitake mushrooms, which are my favorite mushroom in the sauce. I use a lot of garlic, obviously. Um, the bone broth I used, so yeah, it wasn't chicken stock, it was bone broth. It's kettle and fire chicken bone broth, just the regular one. Absolutely love that stuff. Um, it doesn't have a lot of flavor if you just take like a sip of it, or if you like just use it as a broth for like noodles or something, but when you like reduce it down, it, mm, yeah, it gets really, really flavorful. Oh my god, you guys. What the hell? I mean, this did take... What time is it? <sighs> From start to finish, I'd say probably two hours, which doesn't sound that bad, right? But for me, well, this is so bright. Hold on. <laughs> wow. I think it's because it's dark outside. Is that better? But um, yeah, for someone who like cannot wait, like who, who has to cook something in like five minutes, <laughs> like I basically, I usually get really like antsy and like impatient when I'm cooking and I just like try to hurry it up and eat. Um, the other night, like maybe a week ago, I was making um, that mac and cheese I was telling you guys about last week when I went shopping. Uh, I went shopping for all those cheeses. I made my mac and cheese for my sibling when they came over and I don't know if that curdled too, but whatever it was, the cheeses didn't melt properly and it was just because I didn't, I wasn't patient enough and I didn't like simmer the cream enough. I don't know what I did wrong, but I just tried to hurry. And this is the one time I can say, at least recently, that I remember excuse me, the one time that I was patient enough and I did my pan sauce right and it is worth it. Let me tell you guys. Mmm. 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 I will say I was a little bit nervous about the skin, right? Because of course, first I put the skin down, tried to get a good sear on the skin side. I was a little impatient with that and I flipped them before they probably needed to be. Um, but I was nervous about the skin getting all soggy because I was like simmering it and kind of, I had a lid over it for a while. I was like, oh, the skin isn't going to be crispy, obviously. But, and it's not, um, this isn't, you know, clearly a, like a crispy chicken recipe. It's a smothered chicken recipe. But I was nervous it was going to be gross because I don't really like flabby chicken skin or like soggy chicken skin. But it is actually really good. I do not mind the texture of it. Um, I mean, I think it's just because the flavor is so freaking good. There is a fly right on my ring light, and it's super annoying. It's probably flown in front of the camera a couple times. You probably have seen him. Oh my god. Well, this is my last one. This makes four servings. I know there's five pieces of chicken, but it's technically 16 ounces of chicken, so I just divided it up into four servings. So, um, again, I'm going to put... I'll just do it again. I'll put the uh, calorie count and everything up here for you guys. Mmm, mmm. I'm going to finish this up. Oh my god, the fly. Well, guys, I'm going to finish this up. I hope you enjoyed my cooking process for this. If you have any questions about the recipe, please let me know down in the comments. Um, and let me know if you have any stories about saving a broken sauce or a curdled sauce. I want to know because there were a couple different ways on how to do it online. I use the ice cube method and the whisking really hard method. Let me know if there are other ways to do it because that scared me. I was like, oh no, the whole thing's ruined. I was doing so good. But yeah, I'll see you guys. Hold on. <laughs> I'll see you guys in just a second. 
Hey guys, so I thought today, instead of doing a question of the week, we would do something a little bit different. Um, I saw this on Hungry Fat Chicks channel, like, I think this was a while ago, um, but I just rewatched it, and she talked about this test that, it's called the ja uh, Japanese Cube Test, and it's like a personality test, so um, it's not something you take online, I don't think. Uh, maybe there's a, a website where you can do it, but it's kind of like it's a series of questions and you like imagine these things and um, the way you imagine the things and the place, <laughs> it, it kind of tells you a little bit about yourself. So I thought we would do that together. Um, of course, I've already heard it, so I've already like done it in my mind, but I will share with you like my results and like what I thought. And then, so I'll go through all the questions and you'll sit there and kind of imagine, you know, what I'm saying. And then at the end, I'll tell you kind of what each thing means and you'll kind of get an idea of what your results might be. So that'll be kind of fun. So a Japanese cube test. Um, the first one is that I'm going to be looking at my computer from time to time just to like see what the questions are. But um, first things first. So imagine, you know, close your eyes if you need to, but imagine that you're in a desert um, just imagine like a vast desert land, um, however you want to imagine that. And the first thing I want you to imagine, other than that, is um, a cube. So just imagine you come across a cube somewhere in the desert. Um, make sure you uh, picture this cube. How large is it? Um, like what is it made of? What material is it made out of? Um, where exactly is it? Um, is it buried under the sand or is it on top of the sand or is it floating? Um, is it moving? That kind of thing. So kind of just picture this cube in your mind. Um, and then when you're ready, you know, you can pause, but when you're ready, we'll move on to the next one. Um, so after you see the cube, you now also see a ladder. So imagine this ladder, what material is it made out of again? Um, how tall is it? Where is it in relation to the cube? Where is it in relation to you? Um, you know, where is it? Is it on the ground? Is it leaning up against something? You know, all that stuff. Kind of picture that. And when you are ready, we'll go on to the next. Picture a horse. So um, again, with the horse, um, kind of picture, you know, how far away is it from the cube? How far away from it is the ladder? Um, what is the horse doing? Is it moving? Which way is it moving? Um, what does it look like? What color is it? Um, is the horse tied up or is it roaming free? Is it wearing a saddle? Things like that. Just try to imagine the horse and think of all the details about it. And then next, um, whenever you're ready, picture a flower. Um, so where is this flower in comparison to the cube and the horse and the ladder? Um, how many flowers are there? Um, you know, just think think of all the things involving the flower, what color is it, all of that stuff. Finally, um, when you are ready to move on, a thunderstorm begins. Um, so you see this thunderstorm, imagine it in your brain. Um, is the thunderstorm big? Is it small? Is it like a violent storm? Is it calm? Um, what's the distance between the storm and the cube? Um, like where you are? Um, does the storm affect the ladder, the horse, or the cube, or the flower? Um, and just kind of imagine that storm. Yeah, once you're done, um, we can go over the results. Basically, the cube is the first thing I asked about, and that represents yourself, or maybe your ego, but um, this, what this website says yourself. Uh, if the cube is large, you're most likely a very competent person. You could be a good leader as well. If it's small, you're more shy or modest person, um, or you're quiet and you dislike being noticed at social events. Um, if the cube is buried in the ground, it means you enjoy organizing things, thinking ahead. Uh, if it's standing on the ground, you're a practical person and you know yourself and what you want from life. If the cube is moving, you think outside the box and are not always ready to agree with categorization and stereotypes. If the cube is hanging in the air, it indicates an art artistic persona with great creativity. Um, if the cube is solid, you're a fully formed individual who is hard to manipulate. If it's not solid, then your inner world and attitude on life is still forming to the correct uh, shape. Um, for me, my cube was hanging in the air. So I guess that means I am artistic or creative, which is interesting. Um, and it wasn't super large. Uh, the ladder, so the ladder is the next thing you pictured. Ladder represents your family and or friends. 
Um, if the ladder is touching the cube or like leaning up against the cube, then it means you are close to your family or friends and you solve problems with their assistance. If it's detached from the cube though, it indicates you are mo more self-assured and maybe like make decisions without the help of your friends or family. Um, if the ladder's underneath the cube, your friends see you as a leader and an authoritative figure. If the ladder's on the same plane as the cube, you and your family and friends are equals. If the ladder is above the cube, you see your friends as the authoritative ones in your life. If the ladder is more short, uh, you like having a smaller group of friends. If the ladder is very tall, you are extroverted and like to keep several friends and acquaintances. Um, and the horse, I think, was the next thing that I asked you guys about. That's a symbol of your ideal partner. Um, if it's like a sturdy working horse, then you are dependable, or you want a dependable partner who you can rely on. If you visualized a pegasus slash unicorn, you're dreaming about someone you'll never have, or a celebrity. <laughs> um, I'm surprised I didn't see a unicorn, because <laughs> there's, you know, I don't know. Um, if the horse is tied up, it indicates you... Um, Oh, it indicates that you need to be controlling in a relationship. If the horse has a saddle, then you feel safe with your ideal partner. Um, if not, you view your partner, partner as uncontrollable and unpredictable. If it is distant from the cube or moving in the opposite direction of the cube, then you are feeling distant from your current partner or far away from reaching your ideal one. So my um, horse, it did have a, it was like a sturdy working horse, but it did not have a saddle. Um, so... I guess I don't feel safe with a partner. <laughs> and then um, it was distant from the cube and it was also facing, it wasn't moving, but it was like facing away from the cube. So I guess that means I feel that I'm far away from reaching my ideal partner. <laughs> oh, did I tell you guys about the ladder? No, I, so I explained the horse, my thing of the horse and my thing of the cube, but I didn't, I don't think I talked about the ladder. Uh, my ladder weirdly was, it was short. So I guess I don't like a lot of friends. Um, but it was on the same plane as the cube, so I guess that means same plane. me and my family and friends are equals, which is nice. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be, like, above them or below them. Um, it did not touch the cube. It was completely separate from the cube, so that means I am more self-assured. I don't believe that one. <laughs> so the flowers, okay, so the flowers signify your children. So I did imagine, I imagined flowers, but I'm not gonna tell you guys about this part because I don't have kids and I don't plan on having kids but for you guys the amount of flowers you pictured signifies how many children you want to have um kind of interesting because it told me to say imagine a flower so if you guys only imagine one flower I'm sorry I might have read that wrong or maybe this website is wrong but yeah if you did imagine more than one flower then hey maybe you want to have more kids <laughs> um if the flowers were near the cube it shows that you wish for a close relationship with your children. If it's farther away from the cube, you don't particularly care about the distance between you and your children. Oof. Um, mine was far away from the cube, so I guess, and mine was a bouquet. Mine was literally like, um, I don't know, I would say like 12 flowers, and no, I do not want 12 kids, <laughs> but it was the farthest away from the cube, so I don't want kids. Um, the thunderstorm now. The thunderstorm reveals your fears. If it is off in the distance, it uh, means you are living life with little worry. Kind of makes sense, right? If it's near, then you are ready to face what lies ahead. If the storm is directly above you, you feel as though your troubles are currently overwhelming you. Um, my storm was off in the distance, so I don't have much worry. Um, it was kind of rumbly, though, so I don't know what that means. I don't know if this is the best website that described the results. I feel like on Hung Hungry Fat Chicks uh, video... It was a little more descriptive of like, oh, it, you know, what's the cube made out of? Because I asked that, because um, my cube was made out of plastic. Um, so I think in the original one, it was like, oh, if your cube is made out of like metal, something really solid, then, you know, you are more confident. But if it's made out of like something flimsy, then you're less confident. So, I mean, mine was made out of plastic, which can be pretty strong, but it's not as strong as like, you know, steel. But um, it was cool because my cube was literally like multicolored. It, I don't know. I, I don't think that matters. But I mean, it's kind of cool to imagine things and just see where your brain takes you. But all of my objects were floating, except for the horse. The horse was not floating. The ladder was floating. The cube was floating. The flowers were floating. Yeah, I mean, thunderstorm was in the air. <laughs> but um, let me know, guys, like what your results were down below or if you liked this. Um, if you liked this test, you thought it was cool. And uh, let me know if you like believe some of these results and believe it's it's kind of has some truth to it um 
some of some of these tests might because it does like kind of go off of like how your brain works and how you imagine these things but at the same time i think a lot of these a couple of these things for me were not correct so who knows um but i thought it'd just be like a little fun activity for us to do together in lieu of a question of the week or like video of the week it is um sunday night right now and we've been watching football all day but um i didn't have a ton of week or fun <laughs> I didn't have a ton of time this week to film a bunch of different things. Um, oh, today, I forgot to tell you guys, and I I should have filmed this too, but today I actually had a patty melt from a restaurant. Um, I For some reason today, like me and my brother were just watching football. It was like 1 p.m. Um, neither of us had eaten yet. And I was just thinking about like what I was going to eat for lunch. And I'm like, you know what, bud? I kind of want to just like order some food. And he's like, oh, I'd be down. I'm like, you know, I'm down. <laughs> And I'm like, ah, oh, shoot, what do I want? And then I was thinking, and I'm like, I kind of just want like a patty melt from Ramshorn because that was one of the things I was initially craving like a while back. Like I was craving Ramshorn, their chicken and cheese wrap, but the patty melt is just, mm, you know, it's greasy. It's more greasy. I was like, I kind of want that. And Bud was like, me too. <laughs> so we actually ordered that. I got a patty melt. It was a rye bread. It had one um, like meat patty on it. And it looked like American cheese. And then it had a bunch of like caramelized onions and it came with fries. Ram's horn fries are so good and those come with ranch. So I did actually eat the fries and the sandwich and dipped them in the ranch. I dipped the fries in the ranch and I ate all of it and it was actually so good. It was the first time I've had an actual like treat day where I'm like not caring about like, oh, I need wheat bread and oh, I need grass fed, be grass -fed beef and I need, you know, no french fries because potatoes spike your blood sugar, you know. Uh, I wouldn't have eaten the fries uh, normally. But yeah, it was, it was the first time I did a, a treat meal where I didn't care about anything you know, else, like calorie wise, health wise, whatever, since my birthday, which was July 21st. And now it's, what is it? October 16th. So shit, that's like three months. I needed it. I needed another treat day um, because like the other times I've done treat days and I have done them are, you know, times where I will try to make something that I really like, but that's also a little bit healthier. Um, but this just how it came plain old patty melt with French fries and ranch and it's worth it. I felt, I still, I mean, I felt really full after I ate it. Um, but I still felt good. I, I, my mate, I made sure I like went on a little walk afterwards, like right afterwards. So I didn't like just pass out from <laughs> being so, cause I remember when I used to eat a lot of fast food, I would just like, oh, it would knock me out right after I ate it. Just like food coma, you know? Yeah. But, um, so I did that today and that was really fun. I should have filmed some of that, but I just, I don't know. I didn't think about it. I got so excited. <laughs> um, but otherwise like, yeah, food stuff is going good. Um, yeah, I just felt like ordering food today. It's the first time I ordered food in a while too. Uh, but I wanted to say goodbye to you guys. I wanted to do this um, quick Japanese cube test before I said bye for the week, but it's been awesome hanging out with you this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you could, please subscribe to my channel if that's not something you've already done. Um, I post videos every week on Monday. I'll do like vlogs, mukbangs, what I eat in a day, that kind of stuff, food related videos a lot of the times. And um, yeah, like I said, I post every week. Um, please give this video a thumbs up if you did like it. That helps my channel out a lot, as well as giving me a comment down below. Um, yeah, let me know like what you thought of this Japanese cube test. Maybe let me know what your results were or what you think about them. And because I kind of shared mine, you know, uh, thought it was kind of cool. So hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys next week. Have a good one. Peace.